Hello, welcome everyone. So, today we are going to see the next part of uh, amine. I hope you are understanding this chapter and you are uh, uh, being comfortable because this chapter I am teaching first time. Okay. And uh, not for, means do not think that I do not know this chapter, means I am teaching this chapter in first time in the classes, this uh, an online classes. In other classes when I was in offline at that time I have taught this chapter number of times. Okay. So, if you have any doubt in my chapter, please you can comment me and you can ask me personally doubts also. See there are sometimes what happen you know when you are writing the test, uh, the test which I am giving you know, MCQ test. So, sometimes some mistake can happen. So, that mistake you can do of yourself also like just now only I committed one mistake like table. So, it is not table it is unstable actually. So, one is stable what I will compound another one is unstable what I will compound. So, that is stable not table. So, that type of a mistake yeah it is my mistake, but sometimes in the hurry buddy you have to understand this that it will be not a table it will be stable ok. And whatever the mistake it is there I have repaired the mistake and we get the marks clear. Do not worry about these marks, the states marks you do not worry ok. When the that type of exams are coming you know, neat, neat exams and competition exams from which are taken from the school point of view that you focus very carefully ok. Hence, I that I take these exams also very from with tough books and I do not take from the easiest book. Sometimes I take easy paper, but most of the time I take the paper from the advanced book also. Some questions you might be feeling the difficulty also clear. Chalo, so, we will start today the preparation of amine that is courteous reaction. So, this reaction is also will come under the preparation of amines. So, see here, here you are using acyl azide. What you are using? Acyl azide, acyl azide. See this R3 double bond O N3. This group, this much group is known as an acyl and N3 is known as azide. So, this is known as an acyl azide. Clear? When you heat it, when you heat it, you will obtain what will obtain C. What will happen? You will obtain here R N double bond C double bond O. This product you will obtain and this is known as a isocyanate. When you hit this, you will obtain here isocyanate. You have to remember this. Okay? <coughs> now we are just doing the hydrolysis. When you do the hydrolysis, what will happen? You know, see this. See uh, I will give you one shortcut here, how to remember. See this is O, H and here also H. This will get break, this portion will get break. When this portion will get break, it will obtain what here? C O O C O 2 plus R N H 2. In this way also you can remember, this is your Curtis reaction. <coughs> so, what Curtis reaction is using? Acyl azide, azide means this N3 is azide. So, this portion is acyl, acyl chloride, no? Acetyl chloride from that remembering and putting N3. So, we call it as a acyl azide. So, this RCO N3, so this portion is known as an acyl, N3 is known as an azide. So, acyl azide, when you heat it, you will obtain isocyanate. This is known as an isocyanate. Please remember this RN. This N will come here, C double bond O with C a nitrogen is having a triple bond, C triple bond is satisfied, carbon is having oxygen, uh, carbon is having four bond, four bond satisfied, and oxygen having double bond, double bond is also satisfied. Then you are taking this this structure, no RNCO. RNCO structure is known as a isocyanate. Okay. And here then we are doing the hydrolysis. So hydrolysis means we are taking two hydrogen, one oxygen, we crack it. So you will obtain here what? The two H and here O. So C O O C O2 R N H2. So, in this way you are obtaining the amine. We will see it is one example. In exam, if they are asking like this example, CH3, C double bond O, N3. Just if they ask like this and if they put here, what they will put? And first they will put here heating and second if they show H2O. Close your eyes and what do you do, you know? See here R got converted into RNH2 means here instead of R what is there better CH3. So, this CH3 will be converted into CH3 NH2 that is methylamine 
and this whole extra will be what CO2 and there will be also liberation of nitrogen gas. There will be also liberation of nitrogen gas. There will be also liberation of nitrogen gas and that nitrogen gas whatever it is liberated I will uh, show you during the reaction ok. Yeah. Ok. So, there will be liberation of nitrogen gas and this uh, mechanism is bit difficult. Huh? This mechanism is bit difficult clear. So, acyl azide another example if I take CH3, CH2, <coughs> C double bond O, N3, N3. First in exam they are showing heating, second if they are showing H2O. Whenever you see this N3, <coughs> remember this is an azide and azide will use what? Curtius reaction clear, this Curtius reaction. So, what you to do? You can see here if you remember this general reaction RCO and this is this acyl azide this R got converted into amine. So, this R just attached with NH2. So, here which is the R better this is the R here ethyl. So, ethyl will attach with NH2 that is ethyl amine. Then remaining is what here the remaining is here carbon dioxide. So, this portion will convert into carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas ok. If you do not have nitrogen also it will work, but main product is this clear. <coughs> clear and azides are such a compounds which will usually give easily nitrogen that is why only in certain compounds azides are the best reagent because azide will do the reaction also as part just by liberating the nitrogen in that. So, azide will liberate easily nitrogen and further reaction will be done very easily that is why number of places azides are used clear like barium azide also we have seen no preparation of nitrogen while doing the p block element barium azide Ba3 and twice so yeah Ba3 and twice. So, that barium plus nitrogen dioxide was gas, barium azide decomposition, barium azide. So, azides are used generally in a number of the reagent because the reason is azide will easily liberate the nitrogen gas. So, the reaction will proceed the further. So, can I see for the, can I go for the mechanism so? So, we will see this mechanism. I hope you copied it. We will see the mechanism. <coughs> See, I will do only once because this mechanism is not important, but then also you see. See, first we are taking here R C double bond O and R and we are taking here N 3, but how write down see how I am writing N. So, N and triple bond N. Clear this part? Now, see here nitrogen can make maximum triple bond, 3 bonds only. So, here nitrogen has made 3 bonds. So, this is stable. See this nitrogen, this nitrogen has made the 4 bond. So, this nitrogen would have made the 4 bond by donating its lone pair. So, one who donates the lone pair creates positive charge, he has donated lone pair, so he has taken it, so negative charge not understood I know this. <coughs> Better nitrogen can make maximum triple bond no, this is N 2 after making this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 7, 8 yes or no. So, see here R C double bond O see this structure first remember this structure then you automatically understand the charges. Nitrogen can make a triple bond, yes chalo. nitrogen has made triple bond and there is one lone pair. This nitrogen has made four bond means what nitrogen would have make only triple bond. Fourth bond whichever it is formed, this bond is formed by this nitrogen by sharing its lone pair to this nitrogen. So, this nitrogen has given its lone pair to this nitrogen, one who gives the lone pair creates positive charge. He is giving the charge means positive charge, he is accepting the charge, so negative charge, here minus will come. Clear? Chalo. Now, what will happen? First, we will try to heat. During the heating, what we will see? See, this is in a need of, this is having the extra electron and this is in a need of electron. So, this nitrogen which is having the extra electron will try to give its electron to this carbon to make a bond. So, now carbon is making a new bond with this nitrogen in a molecule. So, carbon will try to break a bond of this oxygen, but this oxygen will back bond its electron. So, this oxygen is telling to this carbon I will not break a bond. So, remaining place is what this R. So, R will break it as R minus. So, what will happen see the changes? See double bond O, double bond nitrogen N which is having plus triple bond N and here there is R minus. Here there is R minus. Now, what you are thinking? This R minus will go to this N plus? No, this R minus will not go to this N plus. See this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, no. So, this R minus will go to this nitrogen 
this r minus will not go to this n plus c because the reason is this n plus is a need of an electron. So, there is a two way for this nitrogen to gain the electron either from this r minus or it will gain this lone pair from here only it will take because see I told you that during the this process nitrogen gas is liberated nitrogen gas is liberated now r minus during this process nitrogen gas is better liberated However, this nitrogen is having the plus charge. When this nitrogen is having the plus charge means this nitrogen wants electron. So, there are two way either this nitrogen can get the electron from this R or from here itself. So, your entropy will support what will support entropy how entropy will support see here. If R minus if this N plus will gain the electron from this R minus. So, it will form R N 2 which is no use of but if this nitrogen gets this electron from this bond, so it will liberate as N2. If this nitrogen will gain this electron, if this nitrogen which is a need of electron, if it gains this bond or if it gets electron instead of R from here, so it will gain two electron, this plus will be satisfied and this whole species will be removed. This whole species is removed as N2 which is a gas. So, here entropy is supporting because gas this reaction will become spontaneous automatically nitrogen gas will be removed. If R minus is accepted here nitrogen gas will not be removed because we have to remove the nitrogen gas. So, nitrogen gas only can be removed by breaking this bond. So, this bond will get break. So, this will come here. So, what will happen? See here nitrogen gas will be removed. So, here nitrogen gas is removing N2. Now, here C double bond O double bond N. So, whenever this this nitrogen is taking the electron from this end. So, this nitrogen is giving its electron to this nitrogen. So, N2 who is giving the electron beta? So, this bond is given to this nitrogen by this. So, this will create positive charge. So, this will come here R. So, R will come here. That is why R is coming to that nitrogen. Clear? So, your nitrogen gas is removed now. <coughs> now, who will come? Now, will come water. Now, water will come. So, water story everyone knows it. Where the water will attack C here. Now water will come H2O H H here oxygen here oxygen. Now see here 1, 2, 3. See nitrogen has met the 3 bond. So it is now stable. Not stable. Now see this carbon. This carbon is associated with this nitrogen, which is more electronegative than it. Similarly, this carbon is associated here with oxygen, so which is also more electronegative than carbon. So this carbon will be highly positive charge. So this oxygen means it will be need of electron. So, this oxygen will give its electron to this carbon. This oxygen will give its electron to this carbon. Yes or no? Now, when electron give it to this carbon, so what will happen? This oxygen will try to break a bond. When this bond is broken, so oxygen will tell no, I will not break my bond, I will do the back bonding. So, a back bonding will occur. Now, the space is remaining is of this nitrogen. Clear? So, here something will occur. What will occur here? Carbon here oxygen, here H, here H. Now, out of two lone pair, one lone pair is given and oxygen create positive charge. Here double bond oxygen, here single bond N and here R, here minus. Are you understanding or not? Clear this part and that was position is minus isocyanate. Clear? Now, what will happen? Now, the last class, same story. What is the same story? Now, this oxygen is in a plus charge, but we need the oxygen minus charge because oxygen is electronegative nature. And whenever any electronegative element, if electronegative element gets positive charge, it will be unstable. So, he has to be stable. So, this oxygen will start to attract the electron from this edge. So, H will be removed here, H plus will attach to this N. So, see this. What will happen here? See double bond O. Here, H will be removed as H plus because it will give its electron to this oxygen to satisfy its positive charge. So, oxygen will take its electron. Extra it, it will take this electron and here one edge and this edge is removed as H plus and will react with nitrogen and there is an R here. So, this will be the formation. <coughs> okay. Now, see a nitrogen triple bond, yes, one bond, two bond, three bond, oxygen double bond, yes, everything is stable. Now, again this is an acidic hydrogen, yes or no? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 because this H is here, no beta, H is here this H plus will go here H. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Again, this is an acidic hydrogen. So, this oxygen will try to attack again the electron of this hydrogen. So, this H will be removed as H plus will 
will satisfy or will nitrogen will give its lone pair to this edge and this bond will get shift here. So, what will happen here? See here this C double bond O or easy way last class also we have seen what will happen. See there was here H. Now see this nitrogen is having one lone pair. So, what will happen? This bond will get shift here. So, carbon is making a new bond with this oxygen. So, to make a new bond, old bond has to break. So, this old bond will get break. When old bond will get a break, it will react with this hydrogen because of its lone pair. Or if it is not lone pair also, see understand, this bond will get shift here, a double bond, this bond will get break. So, this bond will get break and this electron will enter into this nitrogen. So, accepting electron who? Nitrogen, create negative charge. Here bond is broken, so H will be removed as H plus. So, except here bond is shifting here, so H will be removed as H plus. Here bond is shifting in nitrogen, so N minus, so here N minus and H plus, they two will do the reaction. So, here C double bond O, because this bond is shifting, upper the double bond change, then plus N, it is having one H, this bond has broken, it will create a negative charge, this negative will satisfy by this hydrogen H, R and one lone pair here. Or I can add on here CO2 plus R NH2. So, see what are the reagents? I got primary amine, I got carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas. This is nothing but the mechanism of courteous reaction. Done this? So, take a screenshot. <coughs> so, this was your mechanism of courteous reaction. Now, we are going to see certain reactions, questions based on the NCRT and then directly we will go to the physical properties. Clear? Take a screenshot. <coughs> so, we will see the next question, NCRT question. First question they have given is this. CH3, CH2Cl convert into CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2. How to do this? See, it is very simple. See, here there are only two carbon and here there is our three carbon. So, one carbon has increased. And remember, when I told you to increase one carbon, hydrogenation. And hydrogenation of what? Isonitriles. Nitrile means cyanide compound. So, first convert this into cyanide which is very easy just by doing what KCN. So, CH3, CH2, Cl react with KCN. So, what will happen here? CH3, CH2 plus Cl minus here K plus and here Cn minus. So, here CH3, CH2 plus and Cn minus means here CH3, CH2 C triple bond N. Can I add like this also? We have seen no? And here the removal of case here. Now see if I do the hydrogenation, remember if I do the hydrogenation in the reaction in the presence of palladium or in the presence of platinum, yes or no? Or Fe plus HCl, this all are the condition for hydrogenation. Remembering this part? Yes, correct. Or ethanol. So there were two type of hydrogenation. One was partial and was complete. Partial was in the presence of another reagent. There was SNCl2 plus HCl. But if I use here Fe, HCl, hydrogen, platinum, hydrogen, palladium, complete hydrogenation will take place. So, this two board will get break. Remembering? And in the partial, only one was breaking. In complete, all the two will break. So, what will happen? You will obtain here CH3, CH2, CH2, NH2. And I told you to use in this access. Remember this, see my last videos. So, I got this very simple. See, I just increased the number of carbon. Clear? Second question is amide to propanamide. Amide to propanamide by HBD. What do you mean by HBD? <coughs> HBD means what? Hoffman bromamide degradation. I mean degradation means what? Carbon will reduce. There are here, there are uh, carbon will reduce in product. So, better carbon will reduce in product. That is only Hoffman bromamide reaction, no? Hoffman bromamide degradation. Degradation means what? Can you Carbon no gattu. Clear? So, here there are propanamide. Propanamide means here there are three carbon. So, better three carbon, methane, three carbon in product. 
three carbon in product. So the question is, Hoffman bromide degradation says that when you come to the product side, one carbon will reduce. And here they have given in product propanamide. So there will be what? Butanamide. So there amide will be of four carbon because when I come from four to here, then it will come propanamide. No, because in product side one carbon should degrade, should reduce. So in product side they have given the propanamide means in product side three carbon is there then for guarantee it will be four carbon in the reactant side because when you come from reactant to product one carbon should, should reduce that is what Hoffman is telling. So here the amide will be of four carbon that is C2, 3 and this 4 CO and it is 2, CH3, CH2, CH2, butane amide will be there. So amide which amide will be there? Butane, methane, propane, butane, single bond. So the amide, which amide? We don't know which amide. Now which amide we come to know? Because amide is converted into propane amide. When you come to the product, one carbon should reduce. So to product side, one carbon should reduce. Reactant side, one carbon should increase. Here propane means three. So there will be four means butane. So here butane amide. That's what. Okay, this is not amide. This is amide, not propane amide. Propane amide. Clear this part? So amide should be which? Butamide. Clear no? That is nothing but Hoffman bromide degradation. Hoffman bromide degradation says what? When you come to the product, one carbon will reduce. So here there is a propane amide. Means here there are three carbons. So when coming from reactant to product, one carbon is reduced. So while going from product to reactant, one carbon should increase. So here three carbon amide. So there will be four carbon amide. One, two, three, four carbon amide. Butamide. <coughs> Next is Next, it is showing very important. See this, which I have shown the last class, which I have done the last class. This reaction, this reaction he has shown. He has shown here benzamide, okay, and reactant, and here they are told Hoffman bromide degradation. So what will happen when you come to the Hoffman bromamide degradation? When you come to the product side, so one carbon should reduce, means this carbon should get reduced. Clear? So we will do the reaction, see here, see, see double bond O NH2, remembering NaOH, then plus what I have to do? Br2, Br2 I will do, so what I will obtain? I will obtain here. First, I will obtain here what? I will obtain here NH2 because this, what it is there, it will convert into Na2CO3. Yes or no? Clear? And here NaBr and here it will come NH2. So, aniline will be generated. Yes, aniline will be generated. Clear? Done this? So next is benzene to aniline. How to convert this? Benzene to aniline. So you have to take a benzene and then you take to aniline. So we know nitration. Nitration will help. Hydrogenation will help. How? See if I take a nitro benzene, suppose if I am taking this NO2 part, this also you know, I have done last class. And if I do the hydrogenation, adding of hydrogen. So hydrogen I am adding in the terms of palladium or platinum, right na? so what will happen, this H, this H is in excess, last class also I told you, no? so what will happen here, H2O will be formed and here it will be formed NH2, so I made aniline from nitrobenzene, but I want to form from benzene, so can I convert benzene to nitrobenzene easily, yes, how, take benzene and do nitration, that is it, what is the condition for nitration, nitration condition is concentrated sulfuric acid plus concentrated nitric acid, yes or no, heating and one water removal of water, that is what. So this is the benzene to aniline, read on this, um, NH2, <coughs> benzamine or aniline, clear, Chalo. so this has been done. Now next I am going to shift towards the physical property, read on, so there are certain questions given in the NCRT. So that's are easy, I guess. You can do of yourself also. Clear? So next, I'm going to the physical property. Take a screenshot.
डन चलो सो फर्स्ट राइट आउट मेक ए हेडिंग फिजिकल प्रॉपर्टीज सी इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट स्पेशली फॉर अमाइट्स अमाइन ओके सो फर्स्ट इज सी If you take lower aliphatic amines, lower up to three carbon, suppose, like methane amine, ethane amine, propane amine, so up to three or four carbon. If you take the amine, they all exist as a liquid. Okay. Or first we'll go with the smell. We'll we'll discuss about the smell. Okay. So lower aliphatic amines, they all exist as a gases, and they are having the fishy smell. They are having which smell? Fishy smell. as the number of carbon chain increases the state also changes lower carbon chain amines are gas bit higher liquid bit higher solid so why it happens so the reason is as the number of carbon chain increases van der waals force of attraction also increases so the phase changes from gas to liquid to solid so first is lower aliphatic amines lower aliphatic amines are in gaseous state and fishy odor and they have which kind of odor very hard smell this smell you cannot uh, control you cannot it will be very uncomfortable you feel like puking so lower aliphatic amine are in gaseous state and fishy smell say up to 3 carbon up to 3 carbon they all are in gaseous state and up to and they will be having the fishy carbon if i go higher aliphatic that is higher that is more than 3 carbon more than 3 carbon amine are in liquid state more than 3 um, carbon amine will be in liquid state then about 10 carbon about 10 carbon amine are in solid clear now the question comes that why this phase changes why from gaseous to liquid or liquid to solid so beta as you go from lower aliphatic amines to higher aliphatic amines the alkyl chain increases and alkyl chain increases means van der waals force of attraction increases and van der waals force of attraction increases so the phase changes from gaseous to solids tell this part first fourth point amines are colorless colorless liquids they are in a colorless liquid but due to oxidation due to oxidation on long standing on long standing they become brown that is aniline become brown become brownish specially aniline this i am talking about specially aniline they will ask in the exam if you prepare freshly prepared aniline will be colorless freshly prepared aniline is colorless but if you keep on the long stand for a longer time say 2 3 5 6 7 months so that aniline will starts to do the oxidation and that colorless liquid will convert into brownish liquid so the reason can come like this that freshly prepared some compound is uh, the freshly prepared a compound is a colorless but on a long stand the compound turns into a an amine compound turned into a brownish liquid so that compound is an aniline clear this part and this oxidation is due to what this oxidation is due to atmospheric conditions this atmospheric conditions due to atmospheric condition oxidation takes place clear this part so first physical property is what beta the first physical property is lower aliphatic amines are in gaseous state and they have a fishy like a smell or fishy odor second is more than 3 carbon atom so when you go then more than 3 carbon atom they exist in a liquid and that that smell also will be like fishy but here the smell is very hard here the smell will be not so hard more than 10 carbon they are in solid in state and last is amines are colorless but they will become brownish in its color due to the oxidation especially for i am talking about for the 
annealing and this oxidation is due to atmospheric condition. Clear this part? <coughs> now next see, we will see solubility. But a solubility is very simple because I will give you one logic. What is the logic? But amines are nitrogen compound, yes or no? Amines are nitrogen compound and nitrogen is having lone pair on it, yes sir. And we know phone H, yes sir. So there is an amine and amine is also having the hydrogen. So they fall under phone H and phone H is a uh, and phone H is a trick for hydrogen bonding. Yes or no phone H. So there is NH, yes sir. There is water, yes sir. So H2O is there. So they will give the its nitrogen will give its lone pair to the hydrogen and will make a hydrogen bonding. Will make a H bonding with the hydrogen of water. So they are capable of making the hydrogen bonding with water, hence they are soluble in water. They are soluble in water. Now who will be soluble and who will be not soluble? We will see this. So write down here as water is polar in nature, as water is polar in nature and nitrogen in amine has capacity to make H bonding with water, well, there is a condition of phone H water, hence amines are soluble. Amines are soluble in that. So, first, who are soluble? Lower alkyl chain amines like methanamine, ethanamine, propanamine. Lower alkyl chain amines are soluble. But higher alkyl chain, but as the alkyl chain increases, as alkyl chain increases, solubility decreases. Now why? C beta, CH3, NH2. Then I have CH3, CH2, NH2. Then I have CH3, I will write down here CH2, 6, NH2. So see, as I move down the group, alkyl chain is increasing. But alkyl chain, R chain is hydrophobic. Yes or no? Hydrophobic. So as alkyl chain is hydrophobic, so what happens, you know, initially the alkyl chain are small. So due to the hydrogen bonding, they will be soluble in water because they are capable of making the hydrogen bond with water. So lower alkyl chain amines, lower alkyl chains amines are soluble, but higher alkyl chain amines are insoluble because higher alkyl chain because as the alkyl chain increase so hydrophobic part will increase so when hydrophobic part will increase so they will be less soluble clear this part thread out as the carbon chain increases there is the alkyl chain increases solubility decreases as the alkyl chain increases the solubility will decreases because of hydrophobic alkyl chains because alkyl chains are hydrophobic, right on. Because the hydro, because the alkyl chains are hydrophobic. Because the alkyl chains are hydrophobic, and hence the solubility increases, is decreases. Hence solubility decreases, and hence solubility decreases because hydrophobic alkyl chain increases, and hence solubility decreases because hydrophobic alkyl chain increases and hence solubility decreases because hydrophobic alkyl chain increases because hydrophobic alkyl chain increases done beta so, so next we are going to see the boiling point now it's very 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 important and it's easy so not to worry huh Chad. So for here, remember one simple shortcut that boiling point is directly proportional to here H bonding. H bonding increases, boiling point increases. See beta, I have CH3, CH2, CH2, NH3. See I am taking the primary amine, I am taking the secondary amine, I am taking tertiary amine of equal mass. I am talking about equal mass, then you can get the easily answer. So I write down here the CL, CH3. Okay. Mm. CH3, CH2, NH, CH3. Clear? This part. Then next here, CH3. And here on the end, CH3 and CH3. 
see this is 1 degree amine, this is 2 degree amine, this is 3 degree amine. So, now better see here, here there are 2 hydrogen, okay. So, N will be like this H, H and H and here there is a lone pair. So, water will come here H2, suppose water is coming here, suppose water is coming here, there is one lone pair here. So, they will make a bond here, they will make a bond here, suppose and they will also can they make a bond, suppose, yes or no or not, uh, forget this portion, lone pair we forget, oxygen will do, now this hydrogen also will make to another amine, yes or no. So, being a 2 hydrogen in NH2, so there will be 2 hydrogen bonding, yes or no, because there are 2 hydrogen in primary amine of a nitrogen, the 2 hydrogen are attached to this nitrogen, so 2 hydrogen bonding, yes or no. So, there are 2 nitro, two hydrogen attached to this nitrogen, so 2 H bonding will be there beta, 2 H bonding, here only 1 H bonding because there is only 1 hydrogen attached to this nitrogen, so 1 H bonding, yes or no no H bonding because there is no hydrogen attached to this nitrogen. If you are considering the nitrogen lone pair also, so one nitrogen lone pair and two hydrogen, matlab three hydrogen bonding, here two hydrogen bonding, here only one hydrogen bonding. So, in short, as I move from one degree to three degree amine, hydrogen bonding is decreasing. So, as hydrogen bonding decreases, boiling point also decreases. See, here there is two hydrogen bonding. Here there is one hydrogen bonding and there is no hydrogen bonding. So, as I move from primary to tertiary amine for a same type of amine of equal mass. So, what will happen? So, hydrogen bonding is decreasing. Yes, so the capacity of making the hydrogen bonding is decreasing. Here there is two hydrogen, here there is one hydrogen, here there is no hydrogen. So, here two hydrogen bond, here one H bonding, here there is no H bonding. So, as I move from primary to tertiary amine, the hydrogen bonding decreases at beta boiling point is directly proportional to hydrogen bonding. So, hydrogen bonding decreases, so boiling point also decreases. Who will be having the boiling point highest? 1 degree, then 2 degree, then 3 degree, right of this. This is one shortcut. Now, if in the exam come, there is one ROH, there is one RNH2, there is one RNHR, RNHR and there is one here R, RNR, R, yes or no? Tertiary amine and there is one alkyl halide. So, whose uh, boiling point is more? Better see is being oxygen and nitrogen, first you compare these two. So, we will see this oxygen and nitrogen. So, oxygen and nitrogen, this nitrogen is less electronegative than this oxygen. So, as oxygen is more electronegative than this nitrogen, so here number of hydrogen bonding will be more as compared to here. So, here hydrogen bonding is more. So, hydrogen bonding more, boiling point also more than this but we know primary secondary tertiary primary is having more and here there is very very less hydrogen bonding. So, here RH because at least here there is nitrogen na, aya to kaya chhed nahi, to H is more, nitrogen is very very more electronegative than this hydrogen. So, here alkyl karta, alkyl chhe, ek alkane chhe, to alkane karta, nitrogen no je compound chhe, amine no je compound chhe, more electronegative chhe, to aji aar lone pair hoa na kaane, aji hydrogen bonding karse, aato karit ne se ke, to aana kata anu boiling pair uchu hoa because I hydrogen bonding to chhed ne. So, this is the series of comparison of alcohol, primary, secondary, tertiary and alkane. Please remember this, this is very important, very, very important, very important this is and this is clear. So, <coughs> from here, why alcohol is more than the amines? The reason is alcohol much a oxygen which is more to negative element than the nitrogen. So, more hydrogen bonding, more hydrogen bonding, more boiling point, clear. So, for today that is it. In the next class, I am going to discuss in detail about the uh, physical properties and the chemical reaction related to the amines. Thank you.